Hello, everyone. Nice to have all of you here. So we will go with three different questions. And uh, please, let's present uh, all of you guys. So we will talk about uh, how you take your business to Canada. And I will throw my first question. And please, don't be shy in answer. Can you tell us why you chose Canada? OK, um, I can start. Uh, firstly, let me just start um, to introduce myself. I'm Beatrice. I am one of the co-founders of Whitehead. And we are an ed tech company that helps parents and educators to develop emotional intelligence in kids. We like to say that we empower children through social emotional education. And as a mother and also being the target market myself, I've been very passionate into addressing this theme. So since we know how the lack of, you know, emotional intelligence and the impact it has on kids, we decided to do something about it. And moving into your question, um, Eduardo, why Canada? It's a very simple um, answer for us um, to say because uh, Canada is known for the multicultural background, which is very rich and you have people from all over the world here. So testing uh, a solution here would be most likely for us to be successful in the whole world. So we decided to start off in Canada. That's the main reason. And just a quick note, I'm probably appearing as a lot of time startup, but I'm Beatrice Donatelli. We had some um, issues here, and I had to log in with another username. <laughs> great, great. Thank you for your question, Beatrice. So yes, and thank you for, for presenting the project also. Uh, guys, who will be the next? I can go. I'm Beatrice Calisi from Rank My App. Is improve mobile marketing on Google Play Store and Apple App Store. Um, we are from Brazil. We in Brazil we have 200 employees. We're the leaders here with 40% of the top 500 apps. But we also expanded to Mexico, Chile, Colombia, and now to North America uh, with Canada and the U.S. Answering your question, um, we chose Canada because. We had a previous experience in the U.S. in 2016. We were accelerated and we lived in the U.S. for nine months. Um, but there the cost of living is very expensive and it was also hard for us to get visas to extend um, our, our time over there. So Canada is very welcoming and also has a um, great opportunity for entrepreneurs. So we chose Canada to expand into North America with the help of Latin startups. Awesome to hear that. So uh, are you living in Canada right now, Leandro? I'm not right now. Uh, I'm back in Brazil. My co-founder was living in Canada until um, last year. Now we're, we're waiting for visas as well. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome to hear. OK, I'll go, I'll go uh, after. OK. Uh, I'm Diego Civils. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Kona. Uh, Kona is an uh, innovation and technology company that provides um, conversational artificial intelligence solutions for banks. We create this chatbot-based technology to provide digital-first customer support. Um, and we are we basically create our company in Uruguay and then launched our initiatives in Canada, basically to try. Uh, an entrance into the North American market. Um, and Toronto being a huge financial uh, market, it was a great fit for our strategy. Uh, you know, Toronto has a lot of banks and you know, great institutions that were a great fit for our um, go-to-market strategy. Uh, and that's why we chose Canada, as well as the fact that uh, Toronto and Canada has a great pool of artificial intelligence talent, which we are very, um, you know, very willing to incorporate into our company. Great, Diego. Thank you very much. I will say that we are friends with Diego too. So don't think that I would have preferred preferred to ask him any question. Diego, are you right now in Montevideo? I'm in Montevideo, yeah. I haven't been able to travel for the last year, so I'm here. Great. So, Bruno, you're the last one. Yeah. <laughs> How are you guys? Well, uh, my name is Bruno Santiago, and I'm one of the co-founders of NeoJets. NeoJets is a digital asset management platform for uh, that helps business aviation uh, stakeholders to future-proof their business. Uh, we have been uh, here in 
Canada for five years now. And yeah, it, it was a great, great experience coming. One of the reasons why we came, uh, and I'm just jumping into the questions that you asked to the other, <laughs> the other guys. Uh, most of the reasons are very similar to Leandro. We went to the US uh, um, where uh, getting a visa was uh, not a very objective process like the startup visa is here. Uh, and also, uh, the, uh, beyond the depot of talent, uh, Canada is, is easy to, from Canada, it's very easy to access our main market, which is US. And the US by itself has more than 50% of the uh, private jet operators and brokers worldwide. So it was, it was easy. And again, like Diego said, the talent pool here is incredible from technology to sales. We have, uh, it's very, it's much easier to, to get someone uh, at a high qualification here than, than elsewhere. Great, great. Uh, so do you have an internal team hired there in Canada? We have we have now four five employees here in Canada, and well, of course we have uh, with the pandemic we we became truly global. We have now employees in Serbia, Brazil, Dubai, uh, the UK. So it, it became it became uh, very common to have remote workers and having people live where they want. Uh, but yeah, we have we have four people working from here. That's awesome. One of the advantages of the working remote. Yeah. So what about you, Beatrice? Uh, you're, you're based in Canada, too? You're yeah, good. Um, yeah, uh, I'm in Toronto. I'm actually um, the only one of the co-founders here at the moment, but we will plan on the others coming too. Great, great. So I will go with the next question, and uh, please, anyone could answer first. What are the biggest lessons learned from the Pacific Alliance to Canada process? Okay, um, well, actually, I can start. So um, my biggest lesson from our countries, um, from Mercosur and uh, all of the, well, at least Brazil, where I'm from, I didn't mention that, um, is actually people that come from countries like us with an unstable economy, we come prepared for pretty much um, worse scenarios. So we're used to that in our home countries. So we are always prepared. We do our business plan. We strategize plans A, B, and C. Um, everything in order to actually pursue our goal. So that's something that actually is very much in our favor when we try to, to you know, uh, be an entrepreneur in Canada or in a country that has a more stable um, economy. And also um, one difference, at least from my home country, is that here in Canada, we have the government that works in our favor. We have uh, not only they invest in education, which is my segment, but they also provide so many incentives for entrepreneurs and in my case, uh, they want to see women succeed also in this man-dominated environment. So for us, it's a very big plus. Great, great. That's true. Uh, Leandro, I, I will continue with you because you also are from Brazil. Do, do you have the same experience than Beatrice? Yes, yes. Uh, it's very interesting what Beatrice shared. Uh, and we also had different learnings. We, we are uh, a B2B company. So we, in Brazil, we're um, looking at inter big enterprises as clients. The difference in North America for us was that it, it was hard for us to get um, our uh, enterprise clients in North America, but it was easier for us to get small and medium business. Um, so small and medium business clients in North America usually pay the same amount as a big enterprise in Brazil. So that's really good because we can sell to the SMBs and still get the same amount that sometimes a large bank in Brazil pays. So that's a big difference uh, from the countries. So when you're going to North America, you have to reevaluate what your ideal customer profile is. Um, and uh, one, one second thing for us that was really important was to have the website and everything that we create in terms of content in English from the start. Because I come from the SEO segment and I know that if you have a longer time um, with your content indexed, it's better for your rankings. So uh, if you are even thinking of in some years starting to expand to, to North America, it's already interesting to have everything in English in your website. This is very important. Those are my uh, two main lessons. Yeah. 
I, I will add you a question there. Do you have today your website in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, or just English? No, three of them. We have English, Portuguese, and Spanish. And we also have like um, natives that, that speak the, the three languages in the company because then the, the for, for us, like the sales relations are really important. And then doing those in the native language is um, also very important. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Awesome. Awesome. So, Bruno, what about you or Diego? Who, who, who want to go first? Uh, if we, so let's continue the round as, uh, as we started. So it's um, just uh, more ordering. Uh, in, um, in my case, I think all that is uh, that Beatrice said and Leandro is all like, like the same happened to all of us uh, coming from uh, Latin American countries into North American countries. There are some cultural differences on the business side that we needed to adapt very quickly. And one of the things I remember clearly was one of my first pitches. I was pitching the features of my product, but I wasn't actually pitching what it, what problem it solved. I was pitching all the technology behind the product, but I wasn't pitching why you should buy it. And I remember um, one of our coaches told, told me, you need to sell a story, you, know, you don't need to sell a feature. Uh, so I changed the whole pitch to tell a story and not tell a feature, why a feature is interesting. So I was, um, you know, that changed the whole thing. So there's, there, there are some very interesting cultural differences that coming from Latin America to North America where people are much more focused on what problem what business problem are you solving? Because they assume all the tech behind, it's all working, it, it, it's it's all good. You're just trying to compete with other people like you and say why you're better and why you're trying to solve a problem better than the other. So that was one of the first things that I, I remember very clearly that changed the whole mindset on like uh, how to solve a problem in Canada. Uh, and then focus on specific industry, don't be a generic, um, software company trying to sell, uh, uh, you know, there's there's a whole mindset of, around products in North America. So uh, and focus on a specific industry. In our case, we were uh, focusing on banks, and we basically said we are only targeting banks. We are not targeting any other industry, and that worked really well for us. Uh, so those are two things I remember clearly, and um, one of my biggest lessons uh, from uh, you know landing in Canada. Yes, that that's, that 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 you mentioned first, Diego, is really interesting because changing the chip as soon as you land North America is really important because we carry with a lot of information from Latin America or from our native countries that sometimes get difficult to yeah. feel native in America, and also yes, a, a specialization or take an industry it's yeah. really important. You shoot me there, I will say we have an, a software agency, so we work <laughs> with anyone and with everything. So Bruno, what about you? There, there's a good, there's a funny thing about being left to say on every question. Most of the answers have already been given. <laughs> uh, and, and yes, I think everyone has actually uh, pointed out common problems that uh, all of us have faced during this process. Uh, and so I'll take a different angle on, on the answer. And one of the, the main uh, learnings that I took here is actually the cultural approach to problem solving. Uh, that's pretty different uh, from, from everywhere else. The pace of work is quite different. Uh, we expect because we are in North America and in a very advanced country that uh, we are going to have investors that are more are bold like the Silicon Valley, and that's not true. Actually, the, the Canadian investor is a little bit more conservative, but uh, that gives us a very good opportunity to learn and grow. And the reason, uh, and one of the reasons why we have grown so 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 well in the past uh, year is because every conversation that we had, we had to be better than the previous one. Uh, we had to work hard to, to, to raise capital. So we had to improve the company. We had to pivot at the right time. We have to pivot three, four, five times. 
and, and these cultural differences and, and the more traditional thinking and, and, and investors being more conservative actually uh, helped us grow uh, much more than I, I think we could if we, we stayed put in, in our country. Uh, so I guess, I guess that, that's one of the big, biggest learnings that I took in, in the past year, past five years. <laughs> Yes, that's a long time been living there. I will add uh, something that it, this is question is from the audience. Uh, what is the biggest challenge you are still facing today? I would say brand awareness uh, in my case, because we had a big company behind in Brazil. We had a market there already. So it's easier for us. That's why our angel investors uh, come. They know us from our history in Brazil. So creating the brand awareness and showing um, the Canadian market who we are, what we're here for, for and you know our purpose, that's been the biggest challenge for us. That, I will add a, a question there. Do you think today the, most of your clients feel that you are a Canadian company or more a Brazilian company? Yes. Um, they, because our company is actually Canadian, so we we are already um, very detached from our previous, you know, um, parent company. So they know that we're a Canadian um, entity and everything, and we're doing everything. We're, we're starting to hire consultants here and stuff like that. So it gives more the 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 Canadian approach and the reality for them. So I, I think that's pretty pretty clear for them. But we still have a lot of work to do on the brand awareness. So great. Uh, I, I will go to our last question because the people, Latam Starter is already taking care from the time. So what are your lessons learned in navigating COVID? Patrice, you can go first. Okay. Um, well, business-wise, for us that are ed techs, um, my first lesson learned would be, why didn't I do it sooner? <laughs> so, but um, I'm really... Uh, very happy and excited with uh, starting a company here in Canada. And for us that are ad techs, we are focused on emotional intelligence. Uh, COVID actually gave us, um, helped us in putting spotlights to the actual um, mission that we have, which is, you know, uh, empowering children and the emotional, uh, mental health is on the spotlight. So, I mean, it's it was good for us. But on a personal aspect, I would pretty much say that we, I discovered that I'm much stronger than I thought I was and to always be ready for change. So that's my takeaway from COVID. <laughs> yeah. Yes, for me, um, we were already working with OKRs and KPIs um, in the whole company, but we reinforced that uh, when COVID started and we, had, we started to work remotely. So that was really important. Uh, you have to have KPIs I have for myself to the last employee. Um, and now we see the team is even performing better than before. So for us, it worked pretty well because of this structure. Um, and you have to look close into the KPIs to keep the team uh, working well. But um, for us, it has worked pretty well. And the market also for our segment has grown. So we have been growing um, since May last year. From March to May, it was hard. But then from May until this month, we, we've grown every month since then. Yeah. I would say that um, from a business perspective, um, you know, doing business to business deals is hard over a, a Zoom conversation. And, and you know, um, there you, you actually see the, the power of meeting people, uh, you know, face to face, uh, and that changes the whole thing. Uh, and from a people perspective within the company is very hard to build culture when you are not close to the people. So it has been hard to keep evolving the culture that the company has over the time. Uh, even when people join the company, uh, I haven't seen them uh, even once. So that has been a challenge for sure, uh, that they embrace the culture of the company. And you know that has been perhaps the hardest part uh, in navigating COVID so far. That, that's true. That's really true. All, all the culture stuff and working remote change all the lives, even if you grow and you have remote themes. Yep. Bruno already knows that. that he yeah. <laughs> well, uh, 
With our industry, uh, even though there was a big hype in business aviation and was one of the few industries that actually grew uh, very fast last year, uh, one of the things that we learned with the, the, the pandemic experience was that you have to pivot fast. And we pivoted from uh, our a service business uh, to an actually tech software business uh, within a year. And and you have to to be ready. Like the pandemic forced you to to take big steps forward and make harsh pivots, but at the end it it, it gave us also uh, good insights and also helped uh, expand our market size. And and if you're in a niche market like ours, uh, expanding it is is just lots of cherries on top of the cake. So. Awesome, awesome to hear that. So I will go with the last question. Please, Bruno, be the first one in answer this. Uh, already five years working from Canada. So do you still uh, maintain a, a startup, your startup in your home country? A Canada office is your headquarter or a branch office? How, mu how much, okay, you live in Canada, but for the others, yeah. how much time they spend in Canada? So yeah, we spend quite a lot of time in Canada. Uh, we basically have employees in Brazil, but there's no Brazilian presence anymore. We have completely merged and, and, and came to Canada. Um, we have although expanded our business through Europe and the Middle East. Uh, so now Canada uh, also holds uh, a good position, but Dubai and, and, and UK are, are our growing markets at this moment. But yeah, uh, it's, it's from Canada to the world, right? That's why we're here. That's true. That's true. So we will go and turn back. Diego, what about you? Do you still have a, your corporate structure in Uruguay? A, where yes. is your headquarters? Yes, actually, uh, well, actually, the fact that we have been acquired this year has changed uh, the structure of the company. But uh, we do have our branch in Toronto, Canada. Uh, and we, but our headquarters right now is still in Latin America. Yes, Uruguay and Argentina. Awesome, awesome. Well, and congratulations for that acquisition. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Leandro, what about you? Yeah, our uh, headquarters is Brazil. We have a branch in Canada, one in um, the US, and we have a branch in Uruguay as well. Um, but we, my co-founder used to live in Canada. He lived there from 2017 to 2020, but now all of us are in Brazil. We're working remotely. So um, yeah, the team is remote, but the co-founders are in Brazil now. Awesome, awesome. Uh, uh, what about you, Beatrice? You will say me that your headquarters for sure are in Canada? Yes, we are all uh, completely detailed from our parent company so we're a light touch a canadian company uh the, our previous company had a fusion with uh, our previous parent company uh had a fusion with another uh big uh ed tech company from brazil so we are completely detached now and our headquarters is here so we do have awesome. team members in other parts of the world but uh doing some outsourcing but we're here and do you have a branch in brazil or something like that or no, just we're just just Canada for now. We're just, just doing, Canada. Yeah, just we hire some people from other parts. We have a marketing, um, one of the marketing consultants is in France. We have our acting CFO in Portugal. So, I mean, it's very global. <laughs> but we're awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's how we work today, everything remote themes, being yeah. global, and trying to do everything from your home if you can. So, great guys. We don't have more questions. So maybe you want to share something. I will add something. Please visit our booth in the expo. Uh, Look Studio, we will be ready to meet anyone if you have any questions.